Brett, oh, excuse me. Well, and Steve, you haven't met Dwayne's our new county engineer. Dwayne Lights. Sorry, you know. So how many different colored pairs of glasses do you have? Ten or twenty. Yeah. <laughs> Think that broke <laughs> I got left somewhere or oh Abby, thanks for coming in. Fell on the ground off the trail. Must be time to Don't start at Abby's here. Yes. Nobody's right. on except for us. We'll call the meeting to order. It's 8 30 in the morning, everybody. Do we have a motion to acknowledge the minutes? So move. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, meet with county engineer. Good morning, Dwayne. Good morning, folks. Hope you guys all had a dry weekend. Yeah. Um, the rain last week gave the road crew some time to do some equipment maintenance, but it also made the roads a little bit of a mess. So we're uh, crews are still placing gravel and grading the grading the roads um, we have one road closure 256 east of highway one they hope to get washed out the creek tops the road billy tells me that's a fairly common occurrence they hope to have that back open today on the issue of nutmeg we've been discussing i met with Royce Fickner from the Asphalt Paving Association of Iowa to get his impressions of this road. He's not from an asphalt standpoint, but he was a county engineer for 30 plus years. So he has a large backlog of uh, roads in his memory and, and solutions to issues. So we went and walked the road again and looked at some of the issues. And his suggestion was to get a a uh, geotech firm to do some sampling so that we could see exactly what we had underneath and that was i thought a great idea that i'd kind of overlooked is my my history in private practice people tend to avoid doing that if they can get away from it but as trying to maintain the road system i think it's money well spent mm -hmm. um, and then i'm also meeting with jacob thorius from washington county out there later this morning or early afternoon, how his morning goes, for the same, looking at the same stretch of road. Billy draws, had a couple of streets that are issues for him. Um, Larch, north of town here, and then Butternut up by Pekin School. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we toured those and we'll I've still got to pull out the five-year plan to see where those are at on it. You have a tip. Spectacular. That's great. Mm -hmm. Do we need to have a motion to it's trummy? <laughs> <laughs> well, we should have a motion to get the trash can out of here so it don't crawl out and get on somebody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> We're good at it. Um, so I'll... I'll Try and come up with some ideas on what we can do with those two roads to include them in the program if they're not. Um, Larch is showing some real bad deterioration mm -hmm. running and and just basically pavement base failure, and it, it appears to be just an old chip seal road. Yeah, now that's that's the Larch is the extension of E Street. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that road's got some severe rutting going on. It it is ours. Yeah. So we need to at least do something. It needs to blow, and uh, um, butternut's just just showing a lot of uh, bad joints in the old concrete. And we <clears throat> spoke with Jeff Fadden from French Renneker about some of the past projects that we're trying to get closed out. Uh, took Billy and uh, Thomas and and Spender. Out and we did a little inspection checking against the DOT's punch list. Uh, most of the mm -hmm. items are 
really quite small. Uh, Billy's guys had taken care of some of them. We've got a list of the items that need to be fixed and they'll get that taken care of mm -hmm. so we can get those projects buttoned up for the DOT, make them happy. And then our two bridge projects that we have upcoming, one with Herberger, which is on 257th, uh, which should be yet this fall. And then the other one is on H52, I believe. And that will be the spring of 22, the German Brill, Germanville Bridge. Mm -hmm. that, that one's getting pushed back till spring. Uh, Thomas is going through the DOT's erosion control inspection okay. program. They can do that online. So he's working through that. So when these projects come on board, he can take care of that. Then I also intend to have him shadow French Renneker's um, inspector just to get his feet wet and learn the procedures for doing that. And then I think the DOT also has a paperwork program so that he can take that, if we can get Billy into that, Tom, Thomas into the paperwork so he can do the certified paperwork that needs to be done for those projects as well, with the idea that we can take over most of that and lower our expenses with French Reinecker. Um When you did talk to French Reinecker, did you talk to uh, Matt Walker uh, about 32nd Street? No, I did so, Okay. No. Spoke with... Uh, because I spoke with Matt Par Parlson yesterday about that, and they said that their, their late start date for the north half of that is uh, this this August, sorry, next month, which means they'll start any time after that and they'll be finished this year. Yeah. So there won't be any way to get the same contract or do the work all at one time. I was trying to figure out if they had a late start date of like April of next year, then you know, we could look at it then. But if we're on track for uh, January running, which you would mention before, that could have tied in together pretty nicely. But with that out the window, I guess we're back to looking what it's going to cost us extra for mobilization mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. This oil oh, yeah. generally goes up and then has been the, the barrel price is going up now that OPEC has it and they're agreeing it. It's going to squeak up a bit more, but uh, I guess the higher it gets, the more cost effective fracking gets, and that kind of helps put a top on it. So that, that is one thing we have in our favor. I think, folks, that may be all that I have on my list. Good job. Yeah. Sounds like you're getting a lot done. Yeah. Doing a lot of uh, learning and tracing papers and trying to find stuff. But we'll get there. Thank you. You've got a very good staff. I can't, I can't speak highly enough about the secondary road staff. They do a great job and they're very conscientious. Very good. Good. Um, update from Fairfield Convention and Visitors Bureau, Terry Baker. You can come up here. Thank you for the opportunity to come in today and chat with you about what Visit Fairfield is doing. Um, what you have in your hand is our latest strategic plan. We spent uh, a few months earlier this year putting together kind of where we wanted to go. Um, clearly, last year was uh, put us on a whole different path with. Uh, how we're going to pursue tourism and getting the marketing out and the message out about Fairfield and Jefferson County as being a great destination for visitors as well as residents. And so we basically put together a strategic plan that allows us to have some flexibility. We know that things are changing rapidly um, in, in every field, but especially in tourism. 
And as we start to see that visitor population start to increase and become stronger and people starting to get in their cars and travel more, we just wanted to be flexible so that we could pivot any of our activities that we need to based on what we're seeing happen with, with the, um, the travel industry. So um, some of the things you'll see in there, we have some things in terms of, of how we're going to support our local businesses. Uh, that was one of our big focuses last year because we felt that if our businesses went away, we had nothing here for visitors to, to come and participate and, and use their dollars to support our local economy. So we spent a lot of time doing that. We spent a lot of time doing things like restaurant week, um, virtual shopping, some different things that would drive, that would help the locals support our local businesses and help them stay healthy during, during that, uh, that previous year. So the other things that we're looking at are how we're going to expand sort of our tourism product uh, in terms of what is what do we need to have here that brings people here? How do we take what we already have and package it in a different way? So we're working on some things like that, um, as well as creating you know some of our, our partnerships and allies within the community to work together to uh, get some get some projects going on that level. So so you'll have that to kind of go through and see where we're where we're headed. Um, I think we have a really nice plan in place. We're going to be doing some um, cooperative marketing with some of our local partners in terms of the other counties around us, trying to work on some things to create package deals. We know that we're not an island. So if somebody comes into Southeast Iowa, if they stay and they, they go to the American Gothic Center or they go to Kisapa or villages of Rambira and different places like that. Uh, it just makes them stay longer in the area. When they stay longer, they spend more money. When they spend more money, it grows our economy. So those are some of the things that we're looking at to, um, to help out in the, in the area. In the last year, um, like I mentioned, we really focused on that business strength and we're continuing that into the next coming year with, um, we're doing a new, um, a new visitor's guide. It's going to be more like a travel magazine. So it'll have a little bit more like stories and, and that sort of thing. We're also working right now with uh, the state. You may have heard that next week is Family Travel Week, that the um, sports associations have sort of called a moratorium. So we're putting together an itinerary for people that, with activities, uh, kids to come and go to the Mastin Barns or go to Carnegie, or to Grizzly County Park, and some different things that families would find interesting to participate in. We've got some of the things like that going. We just finished doing three new videos that are up on our website, videos. One is a general video about Fairfield. Another one is on artists in Fairfield. And a third one on food, the food scene in Fairfield. So we have a few more planned, uh, trying to just get that information across and some engaging content. Obviously our social media is one of the big places we put a lot of attention, trying to get that current message out and drive people into the area as much as possible. And our website is one of the things that we're really like, that is our big star centerpiece because we try to keep that very robust and current. Uh, we feel like that is the place that visitors are going to want to come. We did in the last year rebrand from the Fairfield Convention and Visitors Bureau to visit Fairfield, Iowa, uh, because we wanted that to be a more um, salient message to the consumer. So that when they saw, sometimes the Convention and Visitors Bureau gives that impression that it's something that's unreachable or unusable for a visitor. We wanted it to actually have that message that we're here to provide information to that visitor. We are still legally convention visitors, people, but, but we also like the idea that it gave us a little bit of separation from the convention center, um, which I know that they valued as well because all, there was a lot of confusion about who was who and what who did what. Um, one of the other projects that we have that involves our um, website is we now have, we just recently created uh, QR codes. These are going to other businesses and I have a set for you guys if you like, you have a place for these. Yeah. Um, these are QR codes. People just literally hold the camera of their phone over these. This will go to our website um, where this one has a current listing of all the shops. This one has all the restaurants and this one has all the events. So yeah, that's it up. So um, the idea here again is the more we can keep people in town, research has shown that if we can keep people in town for at least two hours, we will at least double, if not quadruple, the amount of money that they spend in our community. So that's one of the things we're trying to 
obviously uh, let people know that there's more going on here than maybe the one thing they came to town for. Um, any questions on any of, any of those, those projects that we've got going? This is nice. Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a simple thing, but yet it's, it's should be hopefully very effective. And what's nice for us, it's not a printed piece that goes out of date the minute that comes off the press. So it, yeah. it's something we can keep the website updated and current. Mm -hmm. um, and this I have for you. We just we can pass this around. This is just basically our projected budget for the coming year. Obviously, we always appreciate the supervisor's contribution to our our budget. We certainly use those funds especially in mind with our county partners, for example, uh, the barns and places like that that's that, uh, located in the county. Um, right now, we're hoping that things are gonna start rebounding. We don't expect to have the same kind of budget that we've had in previous years. Last year, we had to really trim things down and tremendously. Um, but we were able to sort of, you know, tighten our belts and just do some real grassroots, scrappy kind of marketing and and still keep that awareness level that Fairfield is still here and, and very vibrant. You did a great job in a difficult year of actually so, keeping the you. ball in the air. Yeah, we, we <laughs> tried. We were juggling a lot. I know. Um, so we're hoping this year we're starting to see that that traffic really pick up. Uh, one of the things that really plays to our advantage is that right now, what people love to do right now is get in their cars and go to some rural areas. Mm -hmm. That seems yeah. to be the most popular mm -hmm. sort of day trip, um, small weekend, short weekend trip. So that puts us in a great position. Um, and so we're going to start seeing more and more of that. How are the motels in town doing? Um, actually, they're doing fairly well. Okay. Um, you know, we did lose one hotel. Um, and I have not heard if they're coming back at all. Um, so they're doing all right. Um, I think there, there's going to be a need at some point in time that we're going to either that one has to open up or we're going to need something, something else to, uh, otherwise I know we're going to lose that spillover mm -hmm. overnight stay to surrounding communities. So it's one of the things that we're looking at as well. Anything for Terry? No. No, thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll be in contact. I'll be in contact again about what I was talking about. Great. Right. Thank you. Great. Thank okay. you. Okay, uh, discuss and consider salaries for assessor's office. All this is is a correction of an error. Um, when the conference board met earlier and approved the salaries, we didn't know for sure where the budget was going to land. That's back when it was three and a half percent and it went to two percent. So this is just to correct that error. Yep. Uh, so Are any other any other comments? Nothing really. I just uh <laughs> and it was budgeted actually when we budgeted we budgeted two percent but I had the three percent three and a half percent in a column beside the two percent when I submitted it yeah, it's just a clerical correction. Okay. Glad you caught it. Okay. Yes. I'll make a motion that we correct this. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot, Steve. Um, discuss and consider pay increase for emergency management coordinator. This is more a rubber stamp. This was done by emergency management commission last week at that meeting, which I will attend. And Brett has not had a raise for four years. And so the board decided it was time. And so they gave him an increase. So the reason that we do this in this format is the alternative would be every week he would appear on here mm -hmm. and we'd have to approve it. So this way it's like the other salaries that get approved annually. Um, so that's what that's about. Any questions on that? No, it's been a long time. I think I think Brett needs that pretty desperately. And I think the work that he did over the last 18 months with this pandemic to help out our public health department uh, was tremendous. I, I think you kind of held the ship solid there for a while. You know, Chris did a great job. You did a great job of, of handling everything that was being thrown at you almost on an hourly basis there at one time. So I want to say thank you very much, Brett, for what you do 
for the city and the county as our emergency management specialist. And I've worked with him a lot more since um, January, now that I'm chair of emergency management. He does a great job and he really cares about his job and he's very knowledgeable. So that's good to have somebody like that in that position. So thanks, Brett. Okay. Thanks, Dwayne. You're fine. Thank you, Dwayne. Okay. Hey, I think we need a motion, right? Um, I would make a motion to be approved recommendation from the emergency management board for pay raise for Brett Farrell. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, discuss and consider board appointments. I think we just put this on here just to remind us remind we've got us some things so. to do before the end of the year to help out. Abby and Shannon. If anybody has any. Okay, let's go through that one. Chris is on here. Chris, do you know if Dr. Trent's interested in continuing? As far as I know, yes because um, Iowa code did change where you can have a nurse practitioner now sign your orders, but yeah, okay. I, I haven't asked him yet. Usually I ask him at the September meeting. We just had a meeting last week, but I can put that on the agenda D for the September meeting. Okay, thank you. Yeah, he's done a, done a great job and um, it's, it's wonderful that he's willing to serve and has served. It, it, it absolutely is. We're very lucky to have him. So I'll, I'll make a note and add that to the agenda for next the next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, there's what one in civil service. And county conservation. Sean usually takes care of that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we're still, I think we're still waiting on uh, county attorney to verify with Joe Smoots as to whether he wants to continue. Um, the recorder, I know I talked to uh, Kelly and she was going to ask Melvin Hall once again if she'd like to uh, continue uh, for the compensation board. Uh, everybody else has agreed. We've got uh, three other people that are good until 2023. Um, of course, the board has just reapproved uh, Gloria Country Countryman and Janine Parker uh, till 2025 yep. for our portion of it. So we can push along Kelly and and uh, Chauncey a little bit. I think they'll get that taken care of so that we can have it by the end of the month. So I'll um, be thinking of some potential people for this, maybe when we do I don't know, a work session or a meeting sometime, we can talk more seriously, but it's mm -hmm. good to get it on our radars. <clears throat> um, so we have Mark Schaefer and Stan Plum that are expired as of last December. Mm -hmm. Um, Darren, I have a question. Yes. So, is, is Mark also the director of, of Carnegie? Of Carnegie. Of Carnegie. Okay. Now, Stan last year was not wanting to continue. I don't know if he's changed his mind or not. Well, that was because of not being on the being certified through the state for the historical presence. They are working. Yeah, and that's my understanding. Yeah, uh, I would, I would hate to lose Dan's knowledge. I know. It would, it would be. Do you want to ask him if he's willing to continue? Um, or wait till close it. Well, he's already expired, right? The time. And so is Mark. Right. Yeah, I will talk to Stan. Now I'll call him if you want me to. No, I, I. Well, I know you. Would you like me to talk to Mark? Yeah, I do. I would. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm not real sure a, a director needs to be on board. The governing board. Right. The director of the facility being part of the government. This is 
this is different. One thing I learned when we had that virtual meeting with the state gal mm -hmm. is, and, and the following, this is what she said. Mm -hmm. Historical Preservation Commission is for county items. Mm -hmm. um, it is not for city. And since Carnegie is city, technically, you can do both of those for saying. Well, we yeah. didn't ask it because yeah. we weren't talking about that, but I'm just making that yeah. clarification. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, would that be an attorney question? It probably would be. Uh, when I look at this, I think once in a while, maybe new blood needs to come into an organization or a committee. And mm -hmm. that's not talking about much. Right. But I, I do believe we just keep reappointing the same people. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should. Well, and that's why. Freshen things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just start thinking about it. Um, of course, that one we can think faster on since it's already outdated. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know that. So, if you've got some other ideas on that one, not really. Not you really. may not want to continue. I have no idea. Yeah, you, you say you're going to talk to him if you want me to. Sure, you talk to him. I'll talk to Stan if that's agreeable. That's good. Okay, progressive housing. <clears throat> um, Sean and, and Rick are both on that for a while more, but uh, I think Dick Reed has expressed that he is not wanting to be on there, but someone would need to contact him and find out if he would like to continue or not. Uh, Dick's been on that committee for a long, long time, uh, pretty <laughs> much since uh, Jackson Point. Yeah. Uh, so essentially, we're asking them if they want to continue. We aren't taking them. Well, the other two were fine. It would be whether we need to find out whether Dick would like to. I be can call Dick because his isn't up until uh, next month, sure. August. Sure. But do you or want September? Else? Can you think of somebody else? I'm pretty much guessing he's not going to want to, but okay. I'm only guessing. Well, we have we have just. Uh, to the end of September to try to come up with somebody. So we have just a little bit of time in here, yeah. six weeks, eight weeks, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we'll need to verify with Dick whether he he does or does not want to continue. And then after we find out, then we'll either need to look for somebody or then reapprove him. So we do have um, historical preservation two people that are coming. Oh, okay. Hi. Yeah, Thank we do. You, that would be uh, Mickey Kerr and... Uh, no, that would be Leon and Joan. Oh, okay. Yeah, Leon and Joan Saltz. Leon Connolly and yeah. Joan Saltz. I, I guess I, I do have somebody that maybe not for that, but um, if we do not, as a committee, appoint Mr. Reed again, um, there's a a lady who used to work at First National Bank would be really good. Good. Okay. Sharon, Sharon Wolfman. Okay. Good. She's yeah. very good on anything. Okay. Well, I'll try to. She just bring some new blood into the mm -hmm. committees. Okay. Let me give him a call and let you know. Good. I'm glad you've got an idea on that because I thought that might be a difficult one to come up with somebody. Okay. All right. I think that's all of them. Well, Reeb, we still have Dennis Lewiston on there, and, and there's no well, expiration there's no date. date, it seems, for that. Um, should that be changed to uh, Sean? Okay. All right. In which case, if it is changed to Sean, I personally feel Sean should not be on two boards of commission. No. Sean, Sean's really good with um, the Jefferson County Progressive Housing because he has a brother that is living at that facility and that's why he has quite a bit of contact going on out there and can review the facility and see whether things are happening or not. Um, I'd really love to keep him on that if, if it's your desire to not have someone on two and REAP is a committee of one yeah, I just think that, that we have 
16,000 plus, depending on what the census says, folks that we could pick from, we don't need to have two, the same person on twice. Sure. So I, I would express then to at least talk to Sean to see who he might recommend for that oh, absolutely. reason. Absolutely. Um, and since there is no expiration date with that, I'm sure that's why Dennis Lewiston was on there initially. I doubt it would do much to them. It's probably one of those so. commissions that they used years ago and got some funding and then it went away. Yep. Yeah, and we should find out what do we need anybody yeah. You yeah. know what? Sean will be up to do when does he do his yeah. annual report, Abby? Come talk to us. That'll be pretty soon. Those will be good questions for that. Right. And again, with no expiration date on it, <laughs> we can talk to Sean and find out because I'm certain he would know way more about it than what any of the three of us do. Oh sure. So because I think I'm thinking he usually comes in the fall sometime, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this other form that has the compensate? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, that probably would have been. Um, Yeah, Lane Bush. Correct. Give me half a second, my memory will come back and I can remember the answer. So any ideas? With me, it's five minutes after I should have remembered it. Yeah. yeah. Any ideas on that city property on the way? Um, well, you've got Packwood, Fort from Fairfield, and Maybe we could include another town here because we've got two backwards and four Fairfield. We don't have a lot of Ridge or a Batavia. Or Libertyville. Yes. Or Libertyville. Yeah. And I can see why the four from Fairfield are on. They're all realtors, which, um, or, excuse me. Actually, they're all realtors. I was looking at the Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Judy, Judy Ham, who's a city councilman now. Mm -hmm. um, Doug Bagby, uh, Marshan Roth, and Diane Rosenberg. So um, I, maybe maybe we can talk to Diane to see if she might allow someone from Libertyville or Lockridge to be able to get in on that. Um, you know, you know, because we do have those other two people from Packwood. I am is going through some help. Yes, she is. And that's that's one reason why I said maybe we talk to Diane about uh, whether we can replace mm -hmm. her. And then if we do, or if she doesn't want to continue, then uh, we could look at another community uh, being involved. Yeah, but I do think we need to bring more people, more more of the county into this right do you know anybody in batavia or libertyville or lockridge that live in? see a, i know people okay. that live in the area but I don't if, think if i was thinking of batavia the name that instantly comes up with and i can't think of it um, <laughs> oh, wow. my mom virginia burris she was a school teacher for years oh, she's, okay. yeah. she's a really well-respected person for 30 years would you like to Color. Color. Well, if let's, that would be step two. We should, we should, uh, talk to me, Darren, talking to, to, to Mrs. Diane. Yeah. Well, we still need another one, right? Or are we okay with that one? Well, I think that would put a little more balance to what's going on here. Because I thought this is the one Lane Bush was on, so we already have one vacancy. Oh, okay. That's, that's true. You're right. So, so I will talk to Diane okay, um, good idea. and then just to get a feeling for how she feels about it because you're right, she has had some medical issues here the last mm -hmm. year, year and a half, and um, it's slowing her down. You know, I suppose if um, Diane would like to step down, 
and if we are replacing lane, we would have the opportunity to put two cities in. Right, right. We yeah. could get backward lockers live to work with them. Right. Okay. You say, I didn't need that word. No. Got enough back words. You have representation yeah. there. Okay, are we ready to move on to real estate people? Yep. Oh, sure we are. Is Sally Hayes still doing real estate? I was. Don't know. If she is not, maybe we could uh, have. Uh, I'm thinking. Yeah, right. I'm thinking she doesn't, but I don't know that. Happens. You work a lot with some of these groups. They don't meet that often, correct? No, I've only been invited to one of their meetings um, because they had some questions about some things. Okay. Uh, when, I, when I was invited, I told you who invited me was Chris, uh, or Chris Davis. Oh. Um, as far as realtors are concerned, uh, one name comes to my mind, Andrew Edlin. Um, he would be a new face on the committee if if uh, Sally, and yeah, he is very respected in what he does. And so that would be a name I think we could contact anyway, a person we could contact uh, if that's the case with Sally. So. Brian Richardson. I think Brian Richardson. I believe he, he took a job in or his wife took a job. Yeah. Where's he? Where's 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 he? Where's he? Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, Brian Richardson. Bob Hayes. He uh, he still auctioneers, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay, because that's that's a list on the bankers, auctioneers, property managers, appraisers, loan officers. Okay. Right. Well, um, he was a property appraiser, too. Mm -hmm. Do you know if he moved away? Are you pretty sure? Or Brian Richardson? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They he took did. a job. He took a job in Wisconsin. <laughs> okay. So we have him. Okay. I know this way to away. You're right. It was down. Was that? Libertyville, do two bankers enough? We probably need. Well, and Kathy Thornton's on there. Yeah, she's a banker. She's the uh, community first credit union. Property managers, appraisers. I... The only appraiser I can think of is Jim Horace, but I don't know if we would want to do that. Yeah, I don't know. He's already on the other one. I know. Jim Horace. Oh, an appraiser? That would be the one. Yes, but the name thing is happening today. Yeah. That's a good, I was just thinking trying to get somebody that's not a banker and not an auctioneer. Susie, do you know her to call her? No. <laughs> what does this board do? It's hard to call them when 
you're not sure what the boards do because they don't meet that often. Right, and the person you're asking to be on the board will say, what does the board do? It's a time commitment. Isn't this where there's like the, when land is being taken away from someone, this board meets? Isn't that what they have like in Yes, I can think of it. Oh, that domain. Oh, yeah. I believe that's what I know that this board does. Okay. So they don't meet hardly ever, I would think, because we haven't done we haven't done anything with eminent domain here in the county for a long time. Um, and I don't know whether that works the same thing or that you go to if. Um, you know, the DOT does a project and would buy or get property in order to do their expansion. I don't know whether they were involved with that when Highway 34 was relocated yeah. because that was all that was all new property purchased as well as some eminent domain um, purchase that went. I think the state has more to do with it. The DOT. Well, they yeah. Ultimately, what happens is the property owner gets an attorney. The uh, people that are wanting the property get an attorney, and then a judge is overseeing what's going on for an arbitration between the two in order to tell what the land values are. Um, there's a appraiser appointed by the state, an appraiser that's hired by the people that are looking at their property, and then that's all taken into consideration on how the property is actually purchased or transferred and what the price is at that point in time. Yeah, there is. There there are. There are. So I would just be curious if we have anybody that knows what those rules are. Is that your expertise or nobody knows? One of these well, things we've yeah. always done at the yeah. county because it's in the code. Right, right. I'm wondering if Chauncey would know what some of these groups do. I'm guessing. Well, we guess in the same location we are in a dark corner somewhere. No, I would actually like to know how often these guys meet or if they ever have met. Right. Yeah. What's that for? Well, we're sure they just never because uh, maybe, maybe. I think so. You were, what year did you start? I started, As, I became the assessor in. And that was before my time. Yeah, it probably would have been Becky. Becky and Dick and uh, Lee. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Um, you can don't. touch base with Chauncey and see if he knows any of these boards. I don't know if Shannon would know. It's kind of hard to ask people to be on a board when you well, don't know the time we commitment. We probably also have them at ISAC because I'm sure oh, that's all the communities deal with this kind of thing. And I'm certain that uh, uh, they would at least know or have an idea of what structures of those types of committees are. Good idea. Uh, because I'm sure they're similar all the way across every county in the state. Yeah. And so, well, I'm sure we're in some <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. I forget. I forget. So, good idea, Darren. Okay. <laughs> Come up with one every once in a while. All right. Committee reports. Um, the only committee that I had with this week was the 
Yes, board, and then I've got a little bit of announcement uh, when we get down to discuss and consider nuisance properties. Okay. Okay. Um, I had emergency management 911 and seal. I'm trying to think. The main thing about the emergency management was the racing. We're still talking about whether to do a tax levy or per capita fee. Um, so if this group has any preference on that, our per capita fee is only a dollar a person. So that's only, you know, ballpark $16,000, $18,000. So it means, and it hasn't been raised forever. So it either needs raised or we need to do a small levy. Um, and that, I know within the Emergency Management Commission, it was, we haven't voted or considered it seriously, but um, it would have to be very clearly outlined what it was for. Yes. So I'm personally hesitant to add another levy, but it would have to be. Out late because I just think it could easily go out of right and it uh it abused needs to have some very set guidelines yeah. if it is implemented. And and, uh, it's one of those things what we found out is emergency management is able to carry over funds from years to year, mm -hmm. like the county doesn't, you know, the but so it was discovered that's how they came up with the raise after four years that he had just over $100,000. And so he currently <coughs> does not have any expenses like, you know, he's got an old truck that's starting to last, you know, stuff like that. And it's mm -hmm. like, we know there'll be some expenses down the road, how far they are, who knows? It could be tomorrow, right. it could be three years. So we're just, Again, starting that conversation, and apparently this race thing had been in conversation for a long time. So, um, and then in nine one one, they need to hire somebody to work with. Brett basically to do all these 911 addresses because there's way too much going on in this county with tiny homes, with that building that at Medic City. I've had some conversations with Steve just and how we, I know Brett and you, and again at some point, and it may be, I know Brett's going to be going on vacation. I mean, everybody gets back, we sit in and figure this out because. I think you two have a pretty good relationship. Whereas if one of you finds out about an address, but clearly he's going to hire somebody on contract and I connected him with Chauncey who helped him with a contract. Mm -hmm. It's going to have somebody just do that because this county, and the reason it's a problem here is because we don't have zoning. If we had zoning, we would have a permit process. And since this county has no permit process, they have fire ambulance going out to some of these addresses and there's eight places out there. So we right. don't know where to go. Right. So it's difficult. Um, Plus with all the people that go to a fire, there's no parking in these own people. Yeah, cause you know, you. Quit being. <laughs> yes, the fire department sends their firemen directly to the fire and the truck shows up all equipped with their equipment and everything they need, but parking, I don't think is an issue in this case. <laughs> and say that, hey, can I make your comment? Please. Uh, this is way off the subject. Um, obviously, we don't know the results of the census yet. Is that correct? Right. At some point, we have to maybe do redistricting, redistricting, and that's coming up. That won't affect us. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, it does. Do you look at the township? Uh -huh. Any other schools that are involved in the county? And uh, let me use three and two and three, for example. Let's say three probably lost folks, two is gaining folks. They'll be up, and we decide 
especially in town, by the um, not the attendants, by residents within that area. And so you have to. Well, that gets adjusted. Yeah. I knew the legislative districts, but I didn't think yeah. about. Yeah, and okay. uh, we do that. Okay. So we should be ready for that. So historically, how does that happen? I honestly don't know. Because you weren't here in 2010. I wasn't in 2010, but I was a part of the process. The end of the beginning of the fall, we were getting all of the voting forms they redistricted. Like when I first started, Penn Pleasant Plain and Walnut yeah. were voting. Yeah, and now it's, uh, now it's, it's all three. Right. Okay. And so we. So I got the tail end of it. Did you bring that up? Yeah. No, I didn't think of it. Because, but I think we need to know the census so we know. And I'm That's sure you'll be. Yeah. So will Scott be the go-to person for that, or having to find out the official numbers first? Or like I said, I honestly don't know that part of the process. When your office, I'm guessing you'll get the information first. I'm only guessing. Um, can you let us know? But I think it's to be done in the fall. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Well, I think it's really important. We'll have lots of work sessions, Susie. Oh, yeah. Do that before October when we get the yeah. picking yeah. corn. All right. Thank you. That was a relevant comment. It, relevant? it was relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Collective hearing. <laughs> Okay, um, seal again, there's still concern, you know, about what will happen <laughs> in a letter is going from the governing board um, to the legislators. Just again, loss of revenue, our area lost revenue in this latest law that was passed. We're concerned because we don't have enough pediatricians and they mandate, the state mandates that we have a part, pediatrician participate in the Children's Advisory Committee. Well, A, we don't have enough in our area, in our region. So you're not gonna get them to participate and we'll be lucky to find any medical practitioner to participate, but we're gonna recommend that it could be any you know, family practice or nurse practitioner or somebody. Mm -hmm. And so these are the types of things. Um, restricting the fund balance carry forward to 5% is a huge concern because how do you operate, you know, until October? Mm -hmm. So again, all this is going to be talked with legislators this year. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they can update the bill, but we'll see. You know, when I was in the nursery, our fiscal year ended June 30, started July 1st, and it was federal dollars, so we didn't get that to October, so we always have to be very creative. Yeah. Well, and that's the same thing with SEAL. That's why for years they had like a 20% carryover. Mm -hmm. And then every year I've been here, it's changed. Then the state bumped it up a couple years ago to 40%. Now they say, well, that's too much. So now it's 5%. It's like 5%. It's nothing. Yeah. And fund 10 is supposed to go away. So we don't know how we'll pay county employees that are related. So stay tuned. More to come on that. Public comments. Do we have any public comments out there? Okay. See you then. All right. Um, claims and approved reports. So moved. On the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, nuisance, Darren. Um, we all received an email last week from Bruce Hudson concerning Nathan Harriman's property to the uh, west of Fairfield here on Old Highway 34. Uh, we're now beginning court process again on him. Um, this time the fine would be $1,000. Um, and anybody that's driven out by there, the place is looking even worse than it did before because he's not putting everything way back in the field like it had been. He's just leaving it out in the front yard. Um, I understand that part of his livelihood is recycling stuff, but there's a point at which you have to decide whether or not that's a true business there or not, whether he has 
a recycling's license or whether he has a dealer's license for the cars that are left out there. They need to know whether the cars are licensable. If they aren't licensable, they need to have the title and he needs to have a recycler's license in order to have it. And uh, it's, it's uh, Russ's understanding right now that he doesn't have those kind of things. And this is just something he does. Um, so that puts it in a completely different light this time going through the system. But um, Bruce has been in contact with Pat and they are both now starting through the court process again on Nathan um, because you can't carry over what happened before to go back out and do any cleanup or um, you know whatever on the property that takes place you have to go through the whole process again once you've done it the first time and in this case we have just been flat ignored on what was going on um, even though he didn't receive any of the money himself directly from what was sold back to the scrappers uh, on this. He's still responsible for the nearly $24,000 of that $27,500 that the county spent in order to clean up that property in the first place. And um, um, there's going to have to be something drastic happen this time around. And again, it all has to do with either auto recycling uh, licenses that you need, uh, an auto uh, dealer license that you would need. Uh, vehicles need to not only have the title, but a current license on them, currently licensed for the year that they're discovered to be out there. Um, those types of things have to happen. And until they go through and find a second time, we're not going to be able to find those kind of things out other than licenses that you should have on record with the state of Iowa at this point in time. And it's, again, it's a belief that he does not have any of that type of licensing going on out there on his property and this is all just being done on his own. And so, um, you know, there's a myriad of other problems that go on out there and I think that it scares a lot of people with what is happening in that neighborhood. And I think the neighbors out there have put up with it for long enough and you definitely need to use the full weight of the hammer this time that oh, we I have it available to us. So uh, that's that's Newsom's report. Okay. Um, um, I just thought of just an FYI comment. Saturday I got a call from a, somebody in Northwest Iowa and I almost didn't answer it because it was a 712 code. And I figured them auto, you know, telemarketing for a warranty. So, but I answered it and they wanted to know if our freedom walk was done so they could come visit. They're going to all the counties and they've been to 95 counties. So I said, yeah, come on there. <clears throat> Good. Um, and I have one comment like that too. Um, this weekend I received an email from Pete Sanquist saying that you were in a meeting and you were unable to do something, but you needed help or assistance. And so I responded back, yeah, I what that would you like? And then I got another return email saying that I needed to buy Apple cards and send them somewhere for you. Um, and I said, no way, thanks, bye. And that's that all was the same thing. Email. I called Susie you know? late Friday because I was checking email and yeah. there was something on there from Susie Drish and I, I looked up the, the address where it came from and it wasn't no. hers. And then I looked at it too. I was just Moving back, trying to see what they were going to say, I needed because yeah. I do now have those emails, and if, if there is any any way of prosecuting a scam, that was definitely a scam. So I blocked it. So if you ever send me an email, Susie, and, I, and you're, you're blocked, I mean, tell me. I'm blocked? Well, I blocked what I thought was that address from the scammer. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. I've so. been getting phone calls from people who say who it is, like Darren Hamilton, and it'll be uh -huh. yeah. right. So well, they're using it from this was written in like proper English language, like England English. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, no, nah, that doesn't sound like Susie. <laughs> <laughs> but what I mean, you know, you've done all the nonsense. That's why I clarified <laughs> proper English is in the country. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, we have a motion. One more thing. Oh. Um, what was it? 
Friday night, we were driving past. No, no, no. It was Saturday. We were driving on bridge, going west, and there were little people crawling on top of the rock. I'm not sure we want anybody crawling on top of our feet of rock. No, we don't. Um, I was also questioned about that as far as uh, some of the counties have purchased uh, something to go over top of the rock mm -hmm. when not during the daytime mm -hmm. kind of stuff so that so that it doesn't get exposed so much to the elements. Uh -huh. But I was told that this rock was going to have a clear coat put on it. It was something that was going to be done by probably an auto body company here in town that uh -huh. come out and spray it, which some of the counties did not do that, and so the rocks have faded quite yeah. a bit over the time that they've been there, but these are ones that have been in several years. But yes, I agree that something, some way to keep people from climbing on it and jumping all over it or course, whatever, yeah. you know, to get pictures is not. I, along, along the terms of that rock, um, had a farming out by Brookville, say something to me about it's too bad when you drive by you just see the one side. So she was suggesting we have it on a, a turn, turn slab. Yeah. So I thought it might be a good to pick that up. Or you got it in the back of the dump so truck that it brought it here. I know. Well, so I thought I said uh, I will give that information to the folks that are on the rock. Yeah. Right here. Okay. So now you know. Oh. Yeah, somebody wanted to know if they're going to have like a, I forget the word, dedication or? Um, there is. There's supposed to be a dedication ceremony going on. Uh, I have no idea what time frame that is, but there's also going to be mm -hmm. some landscaping work done around it okay. as well. So people aren't walking through the grass to get over to it. There may be a walkway yeah. or something involved with it. That yeah. might help the uh, uh, little people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how modeling is who I will be on yeah, okay. again over that. So. Um, motion to adjourn. Um, so moved. Second. In favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning, and we'll see you next Monday.